welcome back to my crafty hen house. My name is Elaine. Today I have you out in my little garden shed and I call it my hen house. I have all of my garden supplies out here as well as my bee supplies. And today I brought you out here because we are going to start sowing our seeds for our vegetables. Now I've chosen vegetables, I've chosen some herbs and some flowers. Let me show you what I've started with. And in my previous video, I had mentioned that I know certain vegetables that I can grow down here in South Florida that work very well with me. And this time around, I'm going to start my seeds in the hen house here and get them under a grow light. And I'm gonna try some varieties of different things. And uh, one of those is a beef steak tomato. These are larger tomatoes. Um, I have grown these before. They do take um, a little bit longer than my Campari tomatoes. Uh, so I tend to like to stay with the tomatoes that grow faster, um, ripen sooner. Uh, these take a little bit longer, but I am going to do uh, some beefsteak tomatoes. I'm going to stay with my Campari's. Now these are seeds that I've actually taken out of uh, the tomatoes that I've grown in the past, uh, which is always a good thing to do if you have any vegetables that you can retain your seeds from, whether it's peppers or uh, cucumbers or tomatoes. It's um, always fun to see if you can regrow uh, the vegetables that you like. Uh, this is called a yellow pear. Now, when I bought my baker seeds, um, Baker Creek seeds. I got this one for free. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try this one. And I'm also going to try, uh, this is a burpee and it's called a super beefsteak tomato. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try these. The reason I'm going to try these is because this seed pack is from 2012. And I'm curious to see if this seed is actually going to sprout from 2012. Okay, then what I've decided to do as far as the peppers, I'm going to do my nata pina peppers. Now, I love nata pina peppers. Uh, they look like a jalapeno, but they uh, are not hot. So they're a wonderful little pepper, and I have saved these seeds from peppers I've grown in the past. I'm going to do the same with bell peppers. Now I've purchased bell peppers, red, yellow, and green, and I've saved their seeds, and I'm gonna go ahead and grow these. And I know that these uh, seeds germinated. They're from 2021, and they had uh, germinated for me before, so I'm gonna do these again. Then I'm going to try my hand at calendula again. Now, if you recall, I had planted calendula out with my marigolds in my garden and I had no luck, but I had tried to sow my seeds directly into the soil and um, I'm going to try growing these in my trays and we're going to see how we do with that. The next, uh, I'm, oh, I missed a pepper. This is called a uh, Lesla, Lesia pepper and this is from Baker Creek also and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try this pepper. It looks like an interesting size so we're going to try that as a pepper and basil. We're going to do basil. I have a nice basil plant that is growing out in my raised bed. I'm very excited that this grew uh, and I seeded that directly into the soil and it came up. So I'm going to do a number of these in our little planters. Then I'm going to do, this is called Cirrus Blue Sage. Isn't that beautiful, that flower? But it is an herb, it's blue sage. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grow some of that in a seed start. And then last but not least, I am going to do huckleberry. I've never seen this before. I'm wondering if it tastes like a elderberry or a mulberry. Now I have a mulberry tree and I just love the mulberries. So this is called huckleberries and I'm gonna actually do four of these. 
So uh, let's get started with the soil. So the soil that I'm gonna use is called Seed Starting Mix and it's organic by Burpee. And this is actually a block. It's a hard block. And they say that what you do is you drop this block into a bucket and then you add about a half a quart of water. And it's actually made out of coconut husk. And uh, it's ground, it's very finely ground. You can see how fine it is. And when you do your seed starts, uh, that's what you need to start your seeds in, is a very fine, fine seed start material. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start adding some water uh, to this. And they say that it should expand, you know, quite quickly. So we're gonna do that. about a quart of water, and you can see really where it's expanding right away. And it just, it just flakes right apart. Look at that. So let me go ahead and turn this again, and then we'll go ahead and we're gonna take the seed start and really break it up. Look at it expand. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Again, this is Burpee, and it's a seed starting mix. Very interesting. And then once this is all broken down, they say you can add uh, any type of uh, nutrients that you have, your garden, uh, miracle grow you can add it right to this mix as it as it breaks down and we're going to go ahead and this time we're going to pack each one of these little containers i have a tray here which is a self-watering tray and we'll pack each one of these and go ahead and make an indent for all of our seeds and then start planting our seeds so let me get this all broken down and start packing our trays. So the seed starting mix is all broken down. Again, this is made with coconut core and it's a excellent soil alternative. So this really broke down nicely and I've added plenty of water to it. You can really see it's quite, has a lot of moisture in it. And what I've decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some of this sphagnum peat moss. This is by miracle Grow, And this retains moisture and nutrients. And it's, um, it's enriched with miracle Grow plant food, which I thought would be um, a good opportunity to introduce some of this. We're not going to add a lot, maybe about a half of a bag to this uh, what we have right now and we're gonna go ahead and mix that up because that will supply our plants with nutrients as they're starting to grow from seeds so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix that up may have to add a little bit more water to it I like mixing my uh, my soils in one of these Rubbermaid containers. You can uh, put the lid on it tightly and uh, store it until you need to replant um, in during the season or add more soil uh, around your seedlings when you up plant them. So. This works out really good. And when you're planting seeds, you wanna make sure that the uh, planting seed start that you use is not dense with barks or pieces of bark or um, sticks because the seeds as they grow have root systems that are very fragile. They're just like little hairs and you don't want to slow the process of growth down by making them struggle to get through the soil. So this is a pretty good consistency for us to start packing our little containers. As you can see, it's not 
uh, full, full of water, but it is moist enough to pack nicely in our containers. So let me go ahead. I'll show you how I'm gonna pack this container. We're just gonna fill it with some dirt. Pack it down lightly. And then that is one. We're gonna go ahead and take our finger or a thumb and make a little hole in the center. And then this little container will be ready to accept the seeds that we plant in it. So let me get all of my containers filled and then we'll start utilizing our seeds. So the seed starting block that I added with the water as well as the, the sphagnum peat moss that I added inside the bucket filled all of my little trays, all my little planters. And with none in reserve, I'll show you, I have nothing left, just a few little crumpets. So that was a perfect ratio for planting this little tray. I believe these are four inch little planters. One, two, about three inch little planters. They're three by three by twos. And it filled up a whole tray of 32 little uh, starters. So let's get started with the seeds now. So to begin with, after I filled all these little planters with the seed starting mix, I went ahead and I created labels for each one of my little planters so that I knew that everything that I wanted to plant would fill up all of these little planters. Then there is there rows of eight and there's four rows. That's 32 little planters. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the tomatoes. Now the tomatoes on the back, they all are about the same. You're going to put your seeds in about an eighth of an inch in depth. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the yellow pear. Now I have created four labels for my yellow pear. So I'm going to put those in each little compartment just like this and I know that I'm going to do four of these this is a new tomato I haven't done in the past so what you'll do is you'll go ahead and you'll just indent a small amount about an eighth of an inch deep and we're going to put two to three seeds per little planter and they are so small, as you can see. And we'll put two to three of each one of those in each little hole. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Three. One, two, three. Okay, and you want to move the, make sure that your seedlings or I'm sorry, your seeds are moved around so that they're not all stacked up on top of each other because what you'll be doing is when your seedlings start growing, you're going to end up thinning them out. So you just wanna make sure that they have ample room to grow. So now that our pear tomato is done, we're gonna move on to the next tomato. And I'm always successful with my Campares. So we're gonna go ahead and put a tag in each Campari compartment, the little planter. And again, we're gonna make sure we're about an eighth of an inch in depth for each little planter. And take our seeds, I'm wipe my hand off, I don't wanna catch any seeds. And these are the seeds that I uh, pulled from my uh, tomatoes in the past. So we're going to take those and we're going to do the same as we did with the yellow pear. About three in each little planter. Now you might get a few more, especially with these home seeds because um, of the drying process. It's a little bit more generic than when they when they're processed in a factory make sure that goes in there
All right, and the next tomato we have is the Super Beef Steak. Now this is the seed pack that was from 2012. So I'm only doing two of those. I don't want to waste space with my, um, with my good tomatoes that I know that I can grow. So let's see where they are. Here they are. So this is 2012. And all tomatoes are usually planted at the same depth. Um, let's get this open. About an eighth of an inch is good. And see how nicely the the factory seeds are. They're all split up so easily you can pick them right out where the ones that you uh, dry from home usually have a little bit of the uh, leftover tomato pieces on them so it's a little bit more difficult so we're gonna put three in here and one two three we'll put a couple more in there because I'm not quite sure if these are gonna germinate but we'll see we'll make we've made a note of it drop one okay and then the last one is our beef steak let's see what i did okay i've done two tags for the beef steak as well so i'm going to put those in there and these are from 2021 so let's see we're going to do three one two, three, one. I'll most likely have like four or five come up, but that's okay. Um, that's okay because then you'll just thin them out. And if they germinate, then that's a good thing. You'll have just more tomato plants. All right, after you're done with your tomatoes, I go ahead and I set these aside because what we'll do is we'll go inside and I have a notebook and I'll make note of each item that I planted and how long it takes for uh, them, them to sprout, seven to 14 days. The seed depth is on here. And then I will take these and up plant them into this size little pot in about four weeks. And then uh, four weeks after that'll be the time that they're gonna go into the ground. So the next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and do peppers. Now, I'm very successful with knot of pinas. We know that. So I'm just gonna start with knot of pinas. These are seeds that I've had, I've grown myself uh, in the past. Let me make sure. And I also have um, I also have not pinas growing right now in my garden. I have about six plants. So let's go ahead and put one, two, three. And that one kind of took off on me. So let's get that back over there and try to keep the peppers with the peppers. Now some people might uh prefer to uh do separate trays for separate vegetables because my garden is i guess you could say more of a hobbyist garden at this point i want to make sure that i can grow things before i waste a lot of my soil and let me take a look at the back of this little pepper this lesia lesbia pepper and on the back of it says what does that say? A quarter inch depth. So what you're going to do is all peppers are usually the same. So you're going to go deeper than you would the tomatoes. So we'll just make a, a bit of a hole deeper. Push them down there and then you'll cover them up. So let me go a little bit deeper for this one. And I know that I have these going in as well as green pepper. So I just make a bit of a a deeper hole this one's already been planted I'm just gonna push that around and cover them up so let's start with this one all 
Mm, those are nice seeds as well. See that? So we'll do one, two, three. Let's see, how many did I do of these? I better follow my protocol. There's one and two. And then one, two, three. I'll do four of these peppers. Put them back. And then our bell peppers are the last ones. There's a bell pepper and a bell pepper. And these are also, these are the bell peppers I got from the supermarket. They're from 2021. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. All right, moving right along. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do blue sage. Blue sage. And this is one sixteenth of an inch. So that's not deep at all. One sixteenth of an inch. So that is basically almost scattered right on the top. So I'm just gonna move this ever so slightly and then we'll just put um, a smidge of soil over top of it. And let's see what these look like. Oh, look at how small they are. They are definitely going to need a few more than three. So I'm going to take about, I'm only doing two. So I'm going to take half of each one, a uh, half of this pile for each and we'll sprinkle them around. because they are so minuscule, but they, aren't they beautiful? Okay, and then we're going to do basil. We got three basil. One, two, three. And this is my basil. Basil is the same, I believe. Seed spacing, rows, depth, quarter inch, little bit deeper. So we're just gonna make a bit of a pocket. What in the world? I'm not sure if that's a seed or not, but I am going to take, oh no, it's pyrrolite. All right. And we're gonna do a few more of these in our, our pots as well. Look at how tiny they are. So we're gonna do a few more of these and they are again at a quarter of an inch depth all right so that does it for our herbs and next we have calendula and the calendula i i have not mastered yet down here in florida um but I am going to try with my might to get these to grow. So this was from Azure Standard. So Azure Standard is a, a delivery service that brings uh, all natural organic products to your area. You can go on to Azure and you can put in your zip code and see if they have a drop off location for you and a contact for you. And again, it's Azure Standard. This is Azure. I purchased these seeds uh, from them. And I also get my dry goods from them. I get my wheat flour, my um, my all-purpose uh, all flour. I get my sugar, my brown sugar, my powdered milk. Uh, you can get salad dressings, powdered dressings. You can get uh, different seasonings. You can get dog food. You can get cattle food. Uh, you can get um, fresh produce, fresh meat, butter, eggs. You can get anything. Um, from them that you might find at the grocery store. Uh, laundry soap, uh, hair shampoo, toothpaste, anything, and it's all natural, organic. Um, so just look them up as your, A-Z-U-R-E, 
and see where your drop-off location is. Uh, mine is about 15 minutes away from me. I can um, go there and there's a semi there. A lot of families in my area uses your. Uh, they have great products, great cereals. I use them for my granola cereal. Um, but uh, again, you order once a month and they come to your drop-off location once a month. Uh, so let's get back to the planting. Okay, so the calendula, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put about three or about three in side each little planter and I have four of them. Calendula, calendula is a beautiful flower but it can be used for salves, for uh, lotions, for lip balms, or for tea. You can um, make uh, nice teas with it as well and let me see if I have, well, I know I do, of my flowers. There we go. I'll show you a picture of the calendula. This is strawberry blonde calendula. And this is from Baker's Creek. And they're just a beautiful flower. And you just pick them and you can dry them and put them in teas or lotions or body balms so and it's very very healthy and then finally let's go ahead oh, I think I'm going to put a few more in this front one and finally our last seed is huckleberry huckleberry I'm very interested in what happens with the huckleberry so, and I haven't even opened the package to see what the seeds look like. They say an eighth of an inch deep. You want to plant these. And, oh, they're small. Very small. And that's a huckleberry seeds. So we're going to put about just a little pinch and each one, let me get my holes. And just a few more in this front one. So I'm very interested. I actually purchased two packets of these huckleberries um, just to see how they grow. And lastly, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back and you're gonna cover all of your seeds. Let me show you what all of the seeds look like. And now we're going to go and we're going to go ahead and cover them up. And I think I'm going to just use one of these little sticks so that I'm not covering them too harshly and get them sticking on my finger. All right, I have all of my seeds nicely covered now and I'm gonna go around and just lightly pack the soil down uh, evenly within each cup. And then I'll go ahead and water them. I have this uh, water watering jug. This is called a Chapin, and it's a 48 ounce. Oops, where is that? Right there. And this is a, a watering jug that you pump to get the water. I, and then what it does, let me just make sure, it spray mist. And that's what I'll do is once this is all set, I'll go ahead and uh, spray down all of these seedlings and give them a good start. I just wanna say thank you so much for joining me today as we started these seed starts. Let me show you 
again. Isn't that beautiful? All started and just waiting to grow and go out into my garden. So I hope this video helped you. Uh, I started again with the seed starting mix. I added in a half a bag of this uh, sphagnum moss. This is eight dry quartz. I only added in four with this block. And I was able to create 32 of these three by two little pots. Um, they work really, really good with this self-watering tray. Uh, I picked this up from Amazon. Um, but uh, the, my next step is I'm gonna take all of these packs into the house and I'm gonna make a list and uh, find out when the best time to replant them or plant them up is. It's going to allow me to know when it's time for them to go into the garden, what size, um, uh, area they need, how deep they have to be planted, how far apart they have to be planted. That will give me some type of layout for when it's time for me to plant the garden. Uh, so this will take about four weeks to sprout up. Then we'll up plant, uh, we'll thin out, we'll up plant to um, the larger pots. Those are these little pots. We're gonna up plant to these and then another four weeks and then it's time to get them in the into the ground. Um, by then I should have my garden uh, planter up and ready to plant. And I hope this video was helpful. And um, if you like my videos, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified uh, when I post up again. And until next time, thank you so much and God bless.